everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another live stream. Chat is full of a bunch of chatters tonight. How is everybody doing? Happy Friday evening to everybody. Hope you're all having a great week and you're getting some progress made in your studio, whether you're recording or mixing or mastering or writing or whatever you're doing. So welcome to another live stream. Tonight we're going to do something fun. We're going to compare three API channel strips. We're going to play around with them, talk about the differences, um, listen to them on some stuff, and just have some fun so you can check out the API uh, flavor, if you will, of channel strips from a mixing perspective. So we're going to do that. But before we get started, if you are new here, welcome to the Home Recording Made Easy family. Let us know in the chat if this is your first live stream and or if this is the first time you've Stumbled upon home recording made easy. We want to make you feel welcome. Let us know in the chat. We'll get to the chat in a second um, and let us know. So if you are new here or even if you're not new here and you haven't do your do, have not done your due diligence, make sure you follow Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I think that's it. <laughs> make sure you follow me on all those pieces of social media because there's content going up multiple times a week and a lot of content um, that I don't have on YouTube, I have in other places and so on and so forth. So wherever you like to be on your social media, you wanna make sure you're following Home Recording Made Easy. So make sure you do that. Across the bottom of the screen here underneath my video, you will see the course Mixing with Analog Style Plugins. This weekend is 25% off. I'm sure my good buddy Dave will put it in the chat if he hasn't already. The coupon code is ME25OFF at checkout, and that'll take 25% off. And why Mixing with Analog Style Plugins, you ask? Well, we're talking about channel strips tonight. Last few weeks, we've been looking at comparisons between Pultec EQs and 1176s and LA2As and channel strips. And so Mixing with Analog Style Plugins is a great course if you're someone who's new to using third-party plugins or just someone who wants to brush up and really become more effective with them. That's a great course for you. Also, new podcast episodes have now been coming out. Another one came out yesterday, uh, the pros and cons of going to audio school, which is a popular topic um, for uh, Home Recording Made Easy and people that uh, have asked me that question many times over the years. And so I put it into a podcast episode. Make sure you check that out. And if you like the podcast, Make sure you give me a five-star review. That really does help me out. And last but certainly not least, if you enjoy this live stream, if you find it helpful to you in any way, and you would love to give a donation to help me help you, feel free to use the Super Chat. I thank you in advance for that. It really does help, and I do appreciate it. Also, if you have... Um, in the, are you in the market for any new studio gear and stuff for your studio, hardware and software related, make sure you check out Sweetwater. Dave will put the chat, the link in the chat, um, and you can check that out. That is an affiliate link, which means that I get a small commission for everything you guys purchase at Sweetwater, but you don't pay anything more for it, and I do appreciate it. It helps me, again, to allow myself to carve time out in my schedule to come do these kinds of live streams and give you guys more and more training. That does kind of help the whole uh, home recording made easy brand. So again, I thank you very much for that. So now let's head on into the chat and then we'll check out Studio One and we'll listen to some API channel strips. So let's go to the chat room. Let's see who's here. Here we go. So let me scroll back up here and say hello to everyone that's here. Chris Holmes is here. Hey Chris, how you doing brother? Good to see you, Robbie Craig. Hey Robbie. Uh, let's see, we have David SJ, my partner in crime. The Batman and Robin of the of the <laughs> home recording made easy. Thank you, David, for being here once again. Uh, Randall's here. Hey, Randall, how you doing, buddy? Jim is here. Hey, Jim. Uh, who else? Who else? Got a lot of people chatting. Let me scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, Juan is here. Hey, Juan, how you doing? Uh, good to see you as well. I got you all your your mixes. I'm can't wait to start listening to your mixes. Hey, Don is here. It's 11 a.m. Saturday morning. In Sydney, Australia. Hey, perfect, man. Welcome from all the way across the world. I appreciate you being here, Don. Thank you so much. DJ Big Red 81 is here. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you as well. Uh, let's see who else. Keith is here. Hey, Keith, how you doing? Good to see you. Very, very cool. And uh, did I miss anybody? No, I don't think I missed anyone. So again, we'll do a Q&A like we always do at the end of the demonstration. So if you have any questions, Anything home, home studio related, I'd be glad to help you. I'll get my uh, headphones on. We'll break on into Studio One, and we'll check out some API channel strips. 
Why not, right? Hey, API is cool, so let's check it out. Let me get some headphones on, headphones on, okay. Let me get up Studio One here. Mm -hmm. Which camera angles this? Hold on a second, everybody. Hold on one second. Go season is here. Hey man, long time watcher, first time in the chat room. Great, Christopher's here. Hey Chris, what's up? Smooth Jazz is here. Hey, what's happening? You guys are all starting to file in. That's pretty awesome. Let me get Studio One in my picture in picture up here. So you shall see Studio One in a second. Okay, so with the celebration of the new Lindell's 50 channel strip, which by the way, there's a plugin review on the website right here by Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. Well, it's Brainworks distributed by Plugin Alliance. People got upset because I didn't mention that in the review video. Not that I didn't know Brainworks didn't develop it. I just failed to mention it. I apologize to all the good folks at Brainworks. This is a wonderful channel strip. Go watch the review. We'll walk through it tonight. I'll give you some of the pros and cons of it. We're going to listen to it. It's wonderful. So we're going to take a look and a listen to this. We're also going to take a look and a listen to somewhat, something that's very popular with my following. I don't own this plugin. It's in demo mode right now. This is SoftTube's American Class A, which is an API um, module channel strip. Pretty cool. It's, uh, we'll take a look at this as well. Um, and then lastly, my third API channel strip is the Universal Audio Vision channel strip, which um, this was the first of the three that came out into the market. I've had this one for a long time, and I love it. Um, it's great. Um, and we'll take a look in and a listen to this as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. So now here's the thing about API. Now you got to remember, and I'll, I know some of you will know this, but some of you may not. And then some of you that are watching this on the replay will, you know, so you don't have to spend your time yelling and screaming in the comments. I want to make sure that we just say that these three channel strips that we're going to listen to tonight are not the same um, desk. In other words, these are not intended, to, we're not going to set them up and put the EQs exactly the same and do all of that and see which one, sounds the, which one sounds better than the other because they're not modeled on the same thing. The thing that's a little different about API from the other major, con whoops, oh, I already did this one. Come on. My, my tracker ball mount left click mouse has been giving me a hard time lately. I think maybe time for a new one. The the thing about these channel strips and about API, I was saying, excuse me, is that API in the console world, especially the earlier ones, were very were modular based, meaning that a lot of them were kind of customized. So you 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 had you know a certain you know like the API vision. You had a vision desk that was one version of API. But a lot of studios, what they did is they would mix and match different modules, not every one would have the same compressor or the same EQ or even the same preamp. And so they're different. So these three things, and that's a little different. Like if you get an SSL, um, you know, um, you know, G series, the SSL G series, if you bought an SSL G series and then you bought another SSL G series, they would have the same EQs and the same compressors in them, unless it was something specifically custom, but you would buy them stock like that where API was purchased more in a modular format. So these three channel strips are not intended to be compared to each other, meaning that, oh, they modeled the same kind of desk. That's not what this is, okay? And that's okay, but they all have that API flavor. And we'll talk about some of the differences as we go on. So realize that. So one of the, one of the benefits to possibly, if you are so inclined to, have a couple of different API channel strips is because they will sound a little different from each other because they really are different. Um, and that's really cool. I mean, I like that. That's not a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. But I just want to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about. It's a little different than if we just compared an SSL 4000 G series or an E series channel strip from Waves to say, you know, Universal Audio. They're kind of modeled after the same kind of console. These are not. Okay. So that's, these are the ones we're going to look at. Now, I know there's also another one that a lot of people mention API called the, what is it, by Acoustica, the Pink. Um, I'll be honest, you don't see any YouTube videos of mine, uh, of me demoing their plugins. And the, the, really, the fact of the matter is I've demoed a lot of their plugins, and I simply just don't like them for a variety of reasons. Their website's hard to navigate. The plugins in Studio One Five um, are a little janky, if that's a word. Um, it's very hard to see some of the dials and the writing on, on the plugins. And the few that I've demoed that I was going to 
kind of show you guys and demo for you guys. It just didn't like them. So I don't create YouTube videos to just bash companies and say I think their plugins stink because that's not what I'm about. And I don't think they're terrible, but I demoed the pink and I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it operates. It doesn't work well in Studio One. So that's why I don't have it. Um, but these three are much more popular than that one, I think. But some of you may have that plugin, um, the pink, uh, and you may think pink four, I think it's good and called, and you may think it's great. And that's awesome if it works for you. You know, that's cool. So just so if people want to know why, this is why. These are the only three that I have. Okay, so let's talk about, we're going to listen to this. We'll start with drums. So we're going to do this on drums, bass, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, keyboards, and vocals. However, um, off camera, I've already dialed in the bass, dialed in the electric guitars, dialed in the keyboard. So we'll just look at a few different instruments tonight. And then what we'll do is we'll listen to an accumulative effect across all of our buses. This is a mix um, that has not been touched other than just threw up the faders a little bit. And that's it. So we're going to start with our drum bus. Our drums is a basic drum kit, you know, kick in, kick out, snare, hats, toms, overheads, room, nothing crazy. Here's kind of our raw drums. Let me bring us over to we're not hitting all kinds of Okay, so there's our basic drum sound, if you will, okay? So we're gonna start with the Lindell. This is the newest one to come out. Now again, what I would what I would encourage you to do if you have not done so, come on, left mouse button. It's gonna be time for a new trackball. Uh, go watch the review, because I go into a lot more depth. But So what makes this pretty awesome? Well, it sounds great, which we're gonna hear. But what's nice about this plugin compared to some of the others that we're gonna look at is that you have, um, uh, a few different EQs. So for you have the preamp section here on the left-hand side, you have the EQ section next to that. Now this happens to be the 50B, but they also have the 50A uh, comp uh, EQ and they also have the 60s EQ. So you get three different EQs in this, okay? Um, Waves makes these three EQs in different plugins. There might be other companies that do too, but I'm thinking Waves off the top of my head that make three of these. I think Universal Audio does as well. Um, where you get it all in one plugin, which is really cool, right? Really cool. Um, we also have a compressor section here where you have the VCA compressor and as well as a FET compressor. This compressor is a little uh, different in the way it reacts and stuff. It's a cool compressor, um, but we're going to stick with the VCA because that's what the other plugins have as well. But you have two different types of compressors here as well, which is really cool. So that sets this one apart from the other two we're going to look at right out of the gate, a little bit more variety. Uh, from a CPU point of view, this is not a CPU hog at all. Um, when I did the demo on YouTube, I think I must have had a whole bunch of these out there. and We looked at the performance of the CPU, I think, at that, in that video. So you can put, you know, 30 of these across your session with a, with a, um, with a computer that's mildly specced out and you should be perfectly fine. Um, and so just so you know that. Um, and then this also has this, the feature of this uh, Brainworks Plugin Alliance collab is that this has the TMT, which were, again, they've, they've modeled different channels inside of whatever desk they were doing because each one of those channels is going to sound a little different because it's emulated against different circuitry and that kind of stuff. And so you're going to get a little bit more variety in a little bit in the tonal aspect of things. Okay, so that, so if we looked at the three, this one is more fully feature rich if you want to look at it that way. So this is drums. I haven't done anything to this, but we'll start over here with our preamp side and underneath that we have our filters. We have a low cut filter here we could turn in. Got to turn it on, would be helpful. We have a gain, preamp gain. And we can always turn down the output. All the way up to 1K. So we'll do around 20 hertz, because this is on a bus. We have a total harmonic distortion little set screw here, which is going to add a little bit of distortion to it. This is, I find this is very, very subtle in that it doesn't, when you crank this up, you don't get this really break up, okay? So so just so you realize that. Again, this will be more an of a cumulative effect thing if you did this on multiple tracks. We also have a pad here, 
we also have a unity button and what unity button does is so if you're cranking up the preamp gang you don't need to turn down the output fader because they model the circuitry in, inside of the output fader as well there's electronics there uh, in the analog world as well which has imparts a some of somewhat of a sonic characteristic on the audio so if you don't want to turn it down as you turn up the preamp gain it self regulates and turns down the output that's what unity does so as i'm turning up this input you can see, you can hear the output's not any louder, right? Right, so it's, ex that's what the unity button does. Or you can just turn it off. And if you wanna turn this up a few dB and turn this down a few dB, you can do that. We have our EQ here next. Turn it on and off here. We have low shelf and high shelf filters for the low and the high frequencies. This is a real simple three band here. You can turn our filtering on and off with this little toggle switch. Let's just see if we could dial in something that sounds halfway decent on drums. Let's start with 400. Get rid of some of the boxiness. A little 12K. Little 5K. That's before the EQ, after. Now the one thing I will say about API EQs in general, I don't care which one you use, especially on the top end, they always sound smooth. Unlike some other plugins like some Neve style EQs, um, depending on which one you model, you, you gotta be really, uh, you gotta be really uh, careful with the high end because it can get brittle pretty quickly. Not with API. Same thing with SSL. SSL, you could boost up pretty good and you're gonna be okay. But this API is a little bit more open, a little bit more presence on the top end where I feel the SSL, depending on which one you use, rounds off the top end a little bit. Again, it depends on the plugin, but this has a little bit more open. So you can, you can uh, really open up the top end with an API and it usually always sounds good. So on our compressor here, uh, we have our release down here, our ratio. We'll do a four to one here, got attack threshold and we have a gain makeup gain hard knee soft knee and then this NIV button what that does when you enable it the lower frequencies are gonna trigger the compressor more than if you disable it, then it really works more on the upper frequency. So you can almost think of this as kind of like uh, a low cut filter go before the compressor if you want to. I know it's a little different than that, but that's the easiest way for me to explain it to you. here when you get more compression. We have a gate here, which we're not gonna use the gate. So if I turn this off, you turn down the output a little bit. That's before. <clears throat> After. Okay, so I mean, it sounds really, really good. And again, you can cycle through the other EQs and such, but again, go watch the YouTube video for that, the review. So that's drums. I've already dialed in the bass. So let's hear bass drums together, because I've already kind of dialed in the bass, just to, so we don't spend all night here. Um, so now we got drums bass. Let's hear what it does, the accumulative effect. That's before. That's after. Okay. So let's try acoustic guitar. We'll dial in acoustic guitar together. We can solo it up here so it's easier for you all you cats to hear. <clears throat> so here's our acoustic guitars.
So a little bit of 15K, 2DB, take out 2DB at 400, pretty standard stuff. You're not gonna spend a lot of time, you know, messing with it. Let's go to the compressor. Do a about four to one ratio, we'll do a quicker attack. That's a big difference. That's before. Sounds a little thin in solo, but we're gonna bring it back in. So if I bring back bass and drums. And again, I'll, I would always switch the, uh, on this plugin, always use the the, uh, the different channels. You know, I did the drums one, two, two, three. We did bass, we could do three, four on the acoustics. Cause that does make a difference. They're, they do have a slight tonal difference to them. We've tested that in other videos. So that is a cool feature. Now for electric guitars, again, I think I did this one off camera. There's not a ton of electric guitars happening in this song. <laughs> So I did a low cut at 100. Uh, let's see. Add a little bit of 5K, a little bit of 12K. Not a lot of compression because they're already distorted. That's before. That's after. Okay, so if I bring back the rest of the bands, Four. After. Okay, keys I did off camera too, and then we'll do vocals together. Okay, so we're gonna do drums, acoustic guitar, vocals together and then I did the other three off camera. So here's the keyboard, uh, which has an organ in it, going to this bus as well as a piano. So again, rolling off at 80 hertz, taking a little, little 400 out, adding a little at 12K. Now four to 60 B of compression, nothing crazy. Four to one ratio. I'll change up the channels here. It's before. After. Sounds great. Let's bring the rest of the band back. That's no channel strips at all. After. Okay, so there's the accumulative effect of these five plugins turning it on and off. Okay, 
Okay, so here on the lead vocal, roll off at 150. <clears throat> Again, we're doing this quick, right? So um, taking out a little of 200. Um, let's see, adding a little bit of 12K and a little touch of 20K. And then let's do the compressor. Let's do four to one. That's you know what we're going to do, a little faster attack, fast release. Uh, take off. Can you So there's our lead vocals. Now, if we turn on and off all of these, that's six instances of this plugin. This is what we have. I'm reaching out for someone. I'm reaching out for you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm reaching out for someone. I'm reaching out for you. Can you hear me? So it's got obviously very API-ish in that it's very open and present on the top end. That's very classic of the API sound. Sounds really good. And again, we dialed that in in 10 minutes. All right, now let's take a look. We'll do the same thing. We'll go a little bit faster now. We're gonna take a look. Well, first I'll walk you through this. Here's the American uh, Class A. So this, there is a YouTube video. It's completely done. I think it comes out next week. So you'll see a full review of this on the YouTube channel. Okay, now this is a di little different, has a few little few other features. Now, the thing about SoftTube, you gotta realize, they have a few different channel strips. This is the first channel strip that they have, that I'm aware of, that it's actually a native plugin. Um, they have an, an SSL and a Neve, which is really, originally was designed to be controlled with their console one uh, hardware surface control. It's a little gray box with a bunch of black knobs on it, and you can control the pu plugins, you know, in real time. So you would turn an EQ and you'd see the plugin move. Um, and that's, and um, all their channel strips up until this one was only designed to be used with that software. The, the SSL, they have an SSL J, I believe, and they have a Neve. I don't know if they have another one. I think they just have those two. Um, and this. And now this one you can also use native, but you can't on the other ones, just so you know that. Um, so I had a console one, version one, several years ago I didn't like it, I sold it. It wasn't my thing. Um, but I know people that have them that really like them. I'm not you know, really big into the soft tube stuff because I don't have console one. But anyway, so in this plugin, a little bit easier on the eyes as far as there's less going on, um, and it's laid out a little differently. So let's start over here on the left-hand side. We have our input cane here on the bottom. Okay, we have a filter to the compressor section here, high and low pass here, pretty standard stuff. And we have a phase invert. Next to that, we have this thing called shape. And you can see on the bottom as I click the little shape, it turns the on and off in the display here. Has a gate, a simple gate, um, which I hate, I don't like gates in general. And it has, so, but has a gate and then it has a sustain and a punch here which is really kind of like a transient designer at least that's how i view this thing i don't know if that's what it technically is or if that's what they're calling it but that's what i call it is um a transient designer which is cool which is really cool the ssl native bundle plugins has that on their channel strip which i really like does the focus right one have that too by Plugin alliance is another one that i have i don't know which one that has a transient designer in it i like it you know, it's nice to have a transient designer built into the plugin. That's pretty cool, okay? Now we have our EQ section in the center. We could turn it on and off here, and that's gonna give our center section. So we have a four band EQ, we have a low and a high, and then we have a type. So the type button goes with the low frequency, so it can be a shelf, a bell, or a shelf, high cut, low cut, bell, okay? And then the two mid bands are just that, they're bells and they're um, all stepped here, just so you know. Everything is stepped on API. I don't know if I said that on the last plugin. Now the gain is a little unique here in that um, you can see that it goes from zero, two dB, four dB, six dB, then nine and 12. So the first three steps are two dB increments. The last two steps are three dB increments, okay? On, on all of these, okay? But you also have this gain multiplier where you can now, if you want, you click this button and this will turn it down to quarter dB or half dB steps. So instead of going from zero to two dB, this would, this would go from really it's a half a dB, you understand? 
So you can do that if you want. It gives you a little bit more precision on the on the uh, on the EQ. Several channel strips do that sort of thing. But it's pretty cool. Um, okay, then you have the order in which the EQ is. So when you click the order, and you'll also see as I hover my little mouse over the order, or if I touch anything and do it, you'll see the display up here above the graphic telling me what I'm doing. So for example, here I'm turning up the low mid gain 12 dB. See that? Okay, that's pretty cool. Why that's handy? is when you have the order here, this changes the signal flow. So for example, if I click the first green button, the order is going, the signal flow is going from the EQ to the shape module to the compressor. It doesn't physically move and you can't left click and drag and reshift the modules around like you can in let's say the Waves Omni Channel Strip, but it does change the signal flow. So you gotta kinda pay attention to these little three green dots down here to kinda know what you're doing. Okay, so you can go EQ shape compressor, or you can go shape EQ compressor, which is the way it's physically laid out in front of us on the screen, or you can go shape compressor EQ, however you want to do it, okay? Just so you know that. Next to that, we have our compressor section. We have a parallel wet dry, which is cool for parallel, and we'll keep everything on wet. We have a hard knee, hard knee soft knee. We have a new type and an old type. Now this is also, um, you'll see in a few minutes, this is also a feature on the Universal Audio Vision in that the new type is gonna, is gonna be more of a clean, little bit more modern sound, not as warm and crunchy. That's when it's pressed in, when it's unlit. That's the old style compressor. That is um, based on the, I wrote it down, which compressor is that based on? It's based on a 525 style compressor. Um, and that is going to have, to my ear, a little bit more warm, rounded off top, a little bit more darker sound. Not dark in a bad way, just more warm. Okay. So you have new type, old type. Okay. Then you also have a side chain thing here, threshold release, attack ratio, blah, blah, blah. Last but certainly not least, over on the right hand side, which is unique to this plugin, is you have a drive section. Okay, so drive's gonna add a little bit of distortion and, and whatnot. Okay, it starts anything above 12 noon on the drive is gonna get a little bit more hairy, a little bit more aggressive, zero to 10. More distortion, less distortion, we'll demonstrate that. And then we have a drive character. And what the drive character does is you start off at zero at 12 noon. As you move uh, up to the plus section, clockwise, it's gonna focus the, the distortion on more of the higher frequencies, okay, upper frequencies. If you go below zero, it's gonna focus the distortion more on the lower frequencies, if that makes any sense, okay? And then we have a bypass. And then we have a volume that you can, an output volume to adjust for any input gain that you might have done. You can, you know, level match the plugin, right? And then we have this display in the center. Again, the shape is on the left, the EQ is in the right, and then the compressor is on the, EQ's in the middle, compressor's on the right. You can also change the display from curves, which is the way I like it. Let's turn on so you can see what this does. Can you hear me? To waves. So you can change the view from the, you can see the waves going across, which is kind of a fab filtery kind of a thing, or you could put it on curves, which is typically what I do. Okay, now the gain reduction meter and stuff, you're not going to see how much gain reduction we're getting. We're just going to see a little white bar. We'll demonstrate all that in a second. So I've done this already on bass, electric guitar, and keys. Let's do the drums together. Here's the drums, right? Drums, drums. Okay, let's just solo up our, oops, drums. And let's play with this. So... So we'll do that, 20. Here's our input, let's do our shape here. I'll show you what that does. So punch. You can hear the kick, the transient. See how it lightens it up? That's why I call it, it's like a transient designer. Sustain. That's before, after. <clears throat> so that that's a cool feature. So something like a, a transient designer and such is really good, you know, when you get into a whole mix, a dense mix, and you just, you know, you get towards the end of the mix and you just can't hear the snare come out. Well, if you had this on every one of your channels, you could just turn up a little bit of punch, a little bit of sustain on the snare and help it cut through the mix. That's typically where I would use it, or on toms or on a kick drum, okay? So let's check out the EQ, shall we? See if we get a little bit of bump here at 50. 
Now you can see what's happening in the EQ, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's see if we can get, a, get rid of some of the mud at 500. Uh, let's try, I don't know, 12K or so. 5K. It's kind of what I did with the other EQ. Yeah, it sounds better like that to me. So we can make this a bell, make this a bell. Oh, it already was a bell, sorry. That's before. After. So it's got that API thing, right? Let's do a little bit of a little compression here. And now you can see the compression reduction meter here, the gain reduction. How much are you gain reducing? You don't really know, but you can use your ears, which is what you should be doing anyway. That's the new type, old type. So listen to when I go from new to old type, you'll hear it in the snare drum. The snare will get darker sounding. You won't have that uh, presence on the snare with the old style as opposed to the new style. Now, when you go from new to old, you may also have to adjust the threshold because the way the signal, the way the compressor reacts to the signal is a little bit different, but just so you can hear the difference. It's got a little more presence. It's cool. Okay, so now we got this drive character. You can really hear it there, right? So. Then you want to turn this down the level match it. So it sounds great. I will say it sounds good. I mean, it sounds fine. I'm not a fan of the display. I'm not a fan that I don't like, I don't like the gain reduction meter. I think a lot of that's because like the gain reduction meter and such, I think on the console one hardware unit, I believe there's LEDs and shows you the amount of gain reduction and that kind of thing. So it's not as sexy looking as some of the other ones, but I think it sounds good, you know? And again, in the end, that's what matters. And you should be using your ears to dial this stuff in anyway. You shouldn't be using your eyes, but that's just my first impression. I'm not, I, they could have done a better job with the display, I think. Um, but the controls are simple to use. It sounds really good. I like the drive section. I think that's pretty cool. I guess this might be similar to the total harmonic distortion that's on the plug-in alliance, but this is much more um, obvious and much more control. Um, and the shape with the um, with the with the uh, transient designer feature is really cool as well. Okay, now like I said, I did this on bass already. So here's our bass. Could drive the bass a little more, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Now you can hear it. You really got to turn down the output because it does add quite a bit of volume. Okay, acoustic guitar. We'll do this one, ours. We'll dial this one in together, the acoustic. Okay. I don't know that I would use the shape much on this. Let's see. Let's go to this strummity strum. I don't think that's a candidate for an acoustic guitar because we want to compress a little more heavily and get rid of that real pokey transient. So I don't know that I want to add it back, but it's there. Uh, let's see. Where's that 400?
Now, something like on this acoustic, I might use the old style because it's going to be a little bit warmer. It's going to take some of that, some of that zing out. You can hear it. Okay, bring the, let's bring the rest of the band back in for that section. Let's hear the accumulative effect now of drums, bass, acoustic guitar. Before. After. And don't worry, we'll switch between the three when we get there, because I know someone's going to be... Hey, thanks, Randall, for the super chat. Thanks, Johnny. I really do appreciate it. You're, you guys are awesome. Thank you, brothers. It's got that API thing. Okay, let's do electric, electric guitar. I've already done, so let's listen to that. So I did key, I did electrics and keys off camera, right? So now let's do vocals together. Okay, now we'll do the cumulative effect thing like we just did. Let's listen to this. Let's check out the vocal and see. So as you can hear, well, I can hear, we'll compare it, but you can hear it's way different sounding than the other one. It's a lot different sounding. It's got the API flavor, but it's not like, oh, they sound really close to we get. No, they don't. And that's what's cool about it. Cause you know, depending on what kind of flavor you're into, hey, you have some options. Here's our vocal. I'm reaching out for someone I'm reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm reaching out for someone I'm reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Tell the mothers to tell the little ones That we're all living in a sideways place Please, please resist the violence Lurking in your skin Let it cut until it bleeds out grace Cause everyone feels alone I'm reaching out for someone I'm reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm reaching out for someone I am reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, there's vocals. Let's listen to all five now. Here we go. I'm reaching out for someone. I'm reaching out for you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey. Someone tell the mothers to tell. Okay, so there's the American Class A. Cool plugin. Let's do, last but not least, by any means, let's do Universal Audio's Vision. Okay, so here it is. 
So this one is the older of the three, meaning it's been around the longest. It's a little bit more challenging to see. You can't in, you can't increase or decrease the size of the interface like you can with the plug-in alliance. I don't know if you can on the soft tube, but it doesn't matter. It's nice and big anyway. I don't know if you can adjust the size of this physically, but I'm on a 27 inch screen and that couldn't be better. So it's great. Uh, but here, um, this one is a little bit smaller, a little bit harder to read. Um, but again, this is the original one. So this is a little different in that you can see all the, the way it's laid out. So we have the top of our preamp section. Down here, we have the high pass, low pass filter. Okay, on the top middle here, we have a gate section here. Okay, then we have our compressor limiter down here in the middle, and then we have our EQ. Okay, you can pre put the EQ before or after, turn the EQ on and off here, you can turn the compressor on and off here. Then we have our output here that you can, there's no physical fader, but you can level match by turning the output, um, and you can turn the power on and off, or you can bypass the top left hand corner. There we go. All right, so let's take a listen. What are we on drums? Okay, sure. So let's turn on our filter and keep it low down there like we were. Got plenty of gain coming in. Oh, and then also on the compressor, sorry. I didn't, so we have um, a fast, here you have a slow, you have this little toggle switch. I know it's hard to see, but right on, right next to the threshold to the right, you'll see a little, to, a little mini toggle switch, which by the way, is the way it is on the console. This is true to the console of the Vision console. This is, it's not kind of like it with extra features. This is the way it looks. Um, there's a little, uh, a three little mini toggle switch to change from a medium attack, slow attack in the middle, fast attack on the top. Okay, the gain reduction meter is right underneath it. You have the hard knee and soft knee underneath here, which again is a little mini toggle. And then you also have the new and old style compressor based on what we talked about earlier. Okay, so just so you, it may be difficult to see, but trust me, it's there. Okay, let's get a little EQ happening. Now also on this one too, um, the EQ is like a two-stepped uh, pot. So you have the blue section, which is the frequency, and then the white dial underneath it, which is the amount of decibels up or down. Again, that's true to the console and it's all stepped. It's a little bit more from a, from a from a hardware point of view, it's pretty cool. You got everything right there, but from a, from a plug-in point of view, it's a little challenging, especially because you can't resize the GUI. I don't know when Universal Audio is gonna get on the train with that, but they should. Um, so anyway, just so you know that. So if you click the blue numbers, which is the frequency, you'll see that the dial moves along with it, okay? So pull some of that out. Put a little in it. 5K, that's what I wanted. And then 12K. And you got old style, new style compressor deal happening. Okay. That's before. After. We're compressing a little heavy there. Okay, there's drums. I've already did bass, as I said. Here's our bass. We'll do this one together. Oops. 
Sorry about that. Screwed that up for a second. Five hundred. So four. After. Okay, I've already done keyboards and electric, so let's hear the accumulative effect of those. That's before. So there's the accumulative effect of the API vision by Universal Audio. Okay, so now let's do, um, we're going to do the accumulative effect thing again. So we dialed them in quickly. Hopefully they're going to be relatively the same volume between all three groups. But we're going to start with, remember, the top one here for you keeping score at home is the Lindell. Okay, so we're going to shut these off. So the first one we looked at was the Plugin Alliance. That's this one here. Okay. The second one we looked at, the second row is going to be the American Class A by Softube. And then the third one is the Universal Audio Vision Channel Strip. So let's just, I'll just turn them off and turn them on and you just tell me which one you like. And hopefully one won't be super more loud than the other. Let's start. We'll start off with Lindell. Here we go. I'm reaching out for someone.
forgot on the universal audio, we didn't do that 50 uh, hertz little bump. So the kick drum's much quieter. Let's let's make sure we do that because I did that on all of them. So I want to make sure that we did that. Uh, 50, that's what we did, right? Okay. okay. Better, now it's a little bit more even for you guys that have caught that. Let's check that Lindell and make sure that the 50 bump, did we do a 50 bump on that? I thought we did. Uh, maybe we didn't, did we? I thought we did. Let me just make sure. If we didn't, we didn't. I wanna make sure we're trying to compare apples to apples. Like I said, I know it's not the same. So now you have a comparison between the three. Which one do you like best? Let me know in the chat. Again, they're going to sound a little different. Every EQ isn't exactly at the same point. As you see, I'm tweaking. I'm going kind of quick. But you get an idea. They all sound good. They all have their own distinct flavor to them. Um, um, the one thing about the American Class A that I like is I love the, the addition of the, um, of the transient designer because I think it really gives a little bit more focus to the kick and the snare where the other two don't have that feature. However, you could have just easily added a transient designer plugin and you can achieve the same thing, but that's not the point. And it also has a couple of unique features in the drive, which is kind of cool. I don't like the display um, of it, but I like the sound of it overall. I think it's cool, it's easy on the eyes, it's easy to see. Um, the Universal Audio has always been my favorite prior to the other two, but you know, again, um, I think Universal, I still think this sounds really good and it seems to have a sense of 3D depth that the other two don't have a little bit, but I don't like the fact that again, that the GUI is a little bit hard to see. They gotta make, Universal Audio has gotta catch up with these modern day plugin manufacturers, make the, the interface resizable. That's the first thing. The second thing, there. this one is by far the most expensive of the three. Oh, I shouldn't say that. The soft tube one is $299 if you try to buy it. The Plugin Alliance one, again, at full price is that. But again, with subscription service, and if you have Plugin Alliance, other plugins, you can get those on sale. When this goes on sale a couple of times a year, it's still 200 bucks. So this one's probably a little bit more expensive throughout the course of the year, but you can find deals on them from time to time. Um, but I think they, they need to, for the amount of money that Universal Audio charges for their plugins, they need to have, they need to be a little bit more, they got to get with it a little bit better. I, I feel like they're falling behind a little bit in, in the designs where uh, p p people like Brainworks and Plugin Alliance and stuff, they're giving you, like, you know, like we talked about, the beauty of this one is you get three EQs, you get two different compressors, it's nice and big, it's resizable. You can make it look bigger or smaller. Here's is at 120%. You can really blow the mama up if you want to. This is beautiful if you have a nice big screen um, or if you're sitting with a screen a little bit too farther away or it can go down as small as 80% if you're working on um, a small laptop of some kind. I think that's really important. Uh, the default sets at 120. I like the addition of having the separate EQs and compressors. I like the, the TMT thing, which is really cool. Um, 
So that's you know a good feature as well. So th this is this is a great plugin. So you know it, it all really depends on what flavor you like. I think they all sound good. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you guys have any opinions one way or another? Uh, let's see. Let me scroll up a little bit and see what you guys are saying. We'll go back to the chat. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you found it enjoyable. Hope you enjoyed it. We still got seventy people here, which is really cool. Let's head on over back to the chat. Let's see how everybody's doing. Again, make sure you uh, check out Home Recording Made Easy and get your Mixing with Analog Style plugins on sale this weekend. Now, as always, I'm here to try to help and answer any questions that you guys have. So let's see. <clears throat> Is this song available to mix? Um, no, not right at this point. If you were a member of MixingMadeEasy.net, it would be at one point, probably later in this year. Um, so I don't have it available in any course or anything that I can think of, not at this point. Let me scroll back up and see. Uh, Donnie says, love the bass with the UA. Cool. Uh, Tim Talks Audio. Hey, Tim, how are you, brother? Ready for tonight? Oh, good, you're here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any questions? Let me scroll down to the bottom and make sure I get the latest stuff here. Uh, Robbie says, I'll pick up the 50 when, it go, when you get a coupon. Yeah, you'll get a coupon for it. It just came out. It'll go on sale for sure. Don't pay full price for it. Uh, Jimmy says, I do not have UA, so it's just not an option. I like the other two a lot, though. Oh, yeah, right. So, by the way, the Universal Audio, you have to have a Universal Audio hardware in order to run that plugin. Now, the only thing I will say about the the DSP usage, which is what the equivalent, of, equivalent is of the CPU usage on native plugins, the Vision Channel Strip takes up a lot of DSP. You have to have a pretty hefty... Uh, universal audio hardware rig to put 30 or 40 of those channel strips across your mix. You don't have that problem with Plugin Alliance and with SoftTube. So that's another thing to consider. Okay. So that's, but the universal audio stuff doesn't run on your CPU at all. It runs on the DSP inside the hardware. So it's a little bit different. So if you don't have universal audio hardware, you can't have the universal audio channel strip anyway. So that at least saves you the, 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 the pain of having to pick one out of three because now you only have two choices. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> but it's a cool plug-in nevertheless. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim said, Jim says they all sound good. They all sound great. Like button, Jimmy says. Yeah, like button, Jimmy says. Uh, Victor, hey, Victor, how are you? Good to see you. Go season. Cool. Uh, Mark uh, says, Dave, have you checked out the new Sibilis plug-in by Waves? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't seen it. Uh the uh, hysteresis makes the gain and expander usable. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the gate or expander on any of them. I don't use the only gate and expander. I shouldn't say two plug-in manufacturers are the only gates I'll ever use. And the one I really like the most is the Slate Digital Gate. Classic gate drums gate are the best gates I've ever used. All the other ones I've ever used, I spend more time dialing it in and tweaking it in than I do anything else. And I'm not a big fan of it, typically. Um, so I don't typically mess with the gates on channel strips. I just don't. Um, but that's just my thing. But if it works for you, that's awesome. Uh, is there a specific subject that members of your courses should put to bypass the audio message when sending you an email? Uh, yeah, you won't get, if you're a member of mixingmadeeasy.net, you don't get that autoresponder message. You only get that, right? Is that what you're asking me? The bypass, when you, you send me a message through home recording made easy, you do. And the only reason, so if you're a member of mixingmadeeasy.net and you're paying your monthly membership, you have access to me throughout the whole month. You send me an email, you don't get an autoresponder and I respond to every one of you. If you're not a member and you're just a part of home recording made easy and you buy my courses, yes, if you send me an email and again, that autoresponder is there for a reason. If you read it, um, I get so many emails during the course of the day and during the course of the week, and 85% of them have to do with nothing that has to do with anything in home recording made easy. It's typically, I bought this piece of equipment and I can't get it to work, or Studio One isn't working properly. And really, the amount of volume of emails that I get during the course of the day, I can't possibly answer those anymore. Um, so what I do is I say, look, if you're having a problem with your software or a piece of equipment that you bought... You really should go to the company or the user community for that particular brand and ask your question there because you're going to get help a lot faster. Also, I don't have experience with every piece of gear that's on the planet. A lot of times people will try, and I, I understand why they're asking me, and I appreciate the question, but they'll you'll send me emails like, I got this keyboard, this Korg XTY something or another. I don't even know what that is. You know what I mean? I, I'm not, and so I can't really help, especially in an email. Um, so 
there's no way to that. That's the reason why I have that autoresponder DJ is because I don't want people to think I'm just ignoring their emails. It's not that I'm ignoring them. It's that the volume of email that comes through today, there's no possible way I can sift through all of them and answer all the questions. But if you're someone, and again, you know, you're someone that's bought a ton of courses from me and you have a quick question, something simple that I can answer in an email, I do. Or if you have a question about one of my courses, I can certainly help. So I try to help where I can, <laughs> but I can't help everybody. I just can't. I, I would be, I would have to sit at my desk six hours a day and do nothing but answer emails. And I just can't do that. So I know it's frustrating, but it's just, it is what it is. I just can't do it. So uh, let's see. Joel says, use the vision strip in tracking to save DSP in the mixing stage. Yes. If you're, yes, Joel, great point. How are you? Good for, thanks for joining. Yes. If you have um, universal audio, an Apollo interface, let's say you can record through the universal, through the API vision channel strip, and you can print your print the effect of that to your tracks so that you don't have to use it in mixing. That's another benefit of using universal audio um, is the unison technology, which allows you to do that. So there is a little bit more to the universal audio ecosystem than just a simple plugin as Joel's pointed out. So very good uh, point, Joel. You're absolutely right. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Go season says no point in buying the UA version when you have the plugin alliance version. Well, as I said, you can't use it unless you have universal audios hardware anyway. So it wouldn't matter. Uh, let's see. Uh, Boz makes some really good killer plugins that go season. Okay, cool. Uh, DJ, I got an autoresponder this morning when I sent you an email. So I was thinking if we should have a specific subject. No, you can't. And again, I don't know where you, if you're sending, I'm not sure what you sent me, DJ, to be honest with you. Um, what I am finding sometimes, and again, I'll just clarify this because you asked the question. Some members of MixingMadeEasy.net are sending me their mixes to Home Recording Made Easy. You got to remember now the two separate websites, there's two separate email addresses. Make sure that if you're asking me a question about your membership or if you're sending me your mix for the mixing contest, that you send it to the proper email address. But nothing that you put in the subject line, going to Home Recording Made Easy will bypass that autoresponder. It, there is no, unless I physically shut it off and I, and I can't do that. So anyhow, uh... Let's see. David SJ says he even gets that autoresponder. Yes. And again, it's not really for you guys. It's for the more than new people. You have no idea the amount of email I get every day. Um, and so it's just part of it. You know, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Juan says, I like soft tube. Sounds a tad warmer to me, but I really like the, vers the versatility of the Lindell. Yeah, it's slightly different flavor. You're right. Uh, let's see. What are... What are we in the seventies? Why not just live in 2021 and never have to point, never have to print anything. I'm not sure what that means, but I could be a good point, but I'm not really sure what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Alistair says I will track through the vision and mix with the Lindell. That's a good idea. You could do that too. Give you kind of a unique sound. Uh, I just double checked DJ when I said yes, wrong location. My bad. It's Jimmy Farmer's fault for not using a cowbell in the song. <laughs> okay, DJ, that's cool. So you sent me to the wrong email. No, no problem. It's okay, man. It's okay. Uh, have I tried the Wave Sheps Omni channel? Yep, there's a plug in review on my YouTube channel of it a couple of years ago. It's okay. It's not bad. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite of all the channel strips, but it's okay. Uh, let's see. There's something big coming at home recording made easy. Oh, yeah. There is. I can't talk about that. Please explain the Lindell extension sidechain. Um, I don't use it. I don't, I'm not going to, you can go read the manual if you want to know what it does. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have a pretty good idea about how much email you get. Yep. I get tons. I get, I don't know, between the two websites, 50, 60 a day, and it's climbing every month. Uh, let's see. Elaborate more on the NIV button. Yes, the NIV button, what that does on the Lindell, what that does when you enable it, I mean when it's lit up, that is going to have um, the, the compressor is going to react more to the lower frequencies. When you disable it, it's only going to focus more on the higher frequencies. Mu I don't know where the cutoff point is. You'd have to read the manual, but it's much like, um, like using like the high pass filter. So the low frequencies don't trigger the compressor. That's what it does. That's a very short to the point explanation of it. I'm sure there's more technicalities that you can read in the manual. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Oh, I've only been on here about an hour. Okay, I can stay a little bit longer if you guys have anything. We still got 59 people here. 
hopefully you found this helpful and you enjoyed the live stream. If you guys continue to enjoy these live streams, maybe, you know, we'll do another one next week. We'll compare another uh, set of plugins together if you guys like this. And if you don't, that's okay too. We won't do them. <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> Okay, cool. Any other questions at all? Anything, anything, anything? We need 20 more likes, Juan says. Yes. <laughs> so I just got here. Who won the shootout? Well, who won? That's up to you guys. Who do you think won? It doesn't matter what I think. It's what you guys think. They all sound um, a little different from each other, but they all sound good and they all have different features. So do I think you ought to have one of the three? Yeah, you should have an API channel stripping your, in your collection, I think. I think everyone should use, you know, have some channel strips, and that's certainly a good one. Robbie, thank you, brother. I appreciate the donation. It's very nice of you. Uh, okay, let's see. Just to the point, UA plugins. Oh, just a point. UA, UAD plugins run in your CPU machine. Just try it and see for yourself. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You can't, you can't put, if you don't have a, uh, a universal auto hardware, unless they, well, you know what? Let me, let me, before I tell you you're completely wrong, unless there is something that they just released in the last few months that enables you to do that, that I am not aware of, that could be, that could be true. I haven't been to their website, but unless that's happened, you cannot use a universal audio plugin unless you have universal audio interface or a UAD satellite system. Unless that's changed, you can't do it. It doesn't work. I know that for a fact. I've been a Universal Auto user for 20 years. It doesn't work. But if they did something different and they released something new, let me know. I'll check that out. And if that's true, I'll report back to you guys and let you know. But if I turned off my Universal Audio, my well, if I turned off my interface, you wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to broadcast the audio. But if I turn that off. What would happen was, and I've had this happen before, you turn it off, and if you have a plug-in on in your session, it'll say it's disabled because it doesn't see the hardware. It doesn't run on your internal CPU unless something has changed, okay? I can't just try because I'd have to shut off my all my universal audio hardware, which means you would not hear anything. The broadcast would go silent, okay? So I'll check Universal Audio's website, but... They may have changed it. They may have recoded some of their plugins. That could be true. If it's true, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Uh, Juan says, by the way, fellow Mac users, hold hold off and on Big Sur crashes a lot. I have no choice. My Mac came preloaded. Yeah, if you don't need to upload Big Sur, don't use it. Uh, let's see. UAD license is slave to the DSP ID on your interface. There may be run. It may run in the CPU, but you still need a license key in your interface. Okay, maybe they changed something, Dave, that, that maybe they have changed something and that's something new. If there is, I apologize, I don't know about that. But that was never the case a year up until recently because you could never do that. And maybe, maybe, maybe they've given you now the ability to, to, to do that, to compete with other plug-in manufacturers because before you had to have the hardware and the hardware is expensive. It's not cheap. So, you know what I'm saying? Now, um... Yeah, so maybe they've done something different. I don't know. It's just, I'm just not aware of it. Okay, let's see. Yes, and by the way, Mac users, if you don't have to update to Big Sur, do not update to Big Sur yet because you're going to have a lot of bugs. But um, if you bought a brand new computer and it has it, well, then you're kind of stuck. <laughs> At least for now, you'll have to work through some of the bugs. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, David says, oh, um, hello from Wyoming country. Hey, hello, how are you? Uh, David said, they did it for Luna. Luna needs CPU memory to, f to function. Right, but you can't use Luna unless you have an, a Universal Audio Apollo interface. You can't just buy Luna and download it unless they've changed that in the last six months. <laughs> so what I guess what I think I'm trying to say is you cannot use Universal Audio products, plugins or software otherwise unless you have their hardware unless they changed it. So maybe that's where some of the confusion is. Or they changed something and I'm completely unaware. Hey, which would it be the first time? Okay, let's see. Johnny says, hey, Johnny, thanks for the tip, brother. Is Waze uh, portion server worth buying? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So I'm not the person to ask. I don't have any experience. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, let's see. Go season. I get how it's supposed to work when in Pro Tools, the key... 
the key is option where there is still an external side chain works normal using the key and pro tools, but setting options created crazy feedback. Oh, okay. I'm not a pro tools user. So, okay. That's good info. Uh, Donnie says, thanks again. You're welcome, Donnie. Thank you. Uh, right. But Luna runs on the CPU while slave to the ID in your interface. Plus they also added an eye lock. Yes. Right. Do you have to have an eye lock as well? Yeah. Right. Again, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you guys about UA. If something's different, I'm not aware of. That's not how my rig is set up. So I can't try to demonstrate what you guys are doing, um, which it's cool. That's cool, man. It's all right. Okay, that's fine. Uh, bottom line, UAD kind of sucks. <laughs> get the slate. It's only 15 bucks a month and you get a bunch of other great stuff. <laughs> okay, good point. <laughs> uh, go season. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, I have been doing, uh, Juan says, I have been doing... I have been doing, I've been demoing Abbey Road Studios 3. Wow, do you ever use it, Dave? I have it, I used it, I think it's cool. Do I use it? Typically, no. And the reason why I don't typically use it is because um, when I'm doing YouTube videos or doing things for courses and stuff, if I'm using that plugin and I'm, you're not, whoever's watching my video, if they don't have the same plugin, they're not, they're not hearing the same the correct thing, if that makes sense. So I don't use those kinds of plugins, unfortunately, because um, it, it throws off what you guys are hearing on the other end of the video. But I have used it. We have did a live stream with it once. We played around with it. It is cool. It's a cool plugin for sure. It is cool. Um, it's it's an interesting plugin. It's uh, it's a good. It's a nice way to reference different kind of um, environments to see how your mix is translating. So I think it's a cool plugin. And I, I do have it, but I haven't used it in a while. Uh, cool. Do we still have fifty seven people here? Wonderful. Anybody else have any questions? Any questions, I'd be glad to ask. If not, we'll head out. And for people watching this, uh, all this will be on YouTube tomorrow, so you guys can watch it on the replay. Um, again, make sure you go out to Home Recording Made Easy. If you're someone that's new here especially, get your free core. I have a free mixing course to give you right on the website. You can take that for free and enjoy that and uh, check out all that stuff. Um, and what else? What else? What else? So we have uh, new videos coming out next week. I forget what videos. We have a couple new videos coming out next week. We may do another live stream next week. Hey, Terry, thank you, brother. I appreciate the, the donation. <clears throat> uh, do, do I like anything from Nam this year? You know, I haven't really watched much. It's, you know, the only thing that I have watched is I watched the Paul Reed Smith guitars uh, demonstration. They got like a bunch of new guitars out, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but I don't, I haven't watched a lot of the footage, so I really can't tell you if I like anything yet because I haven't dove into YouTube long enough to watch it, but I probably will over the weekend and I'll let you guys know. Uh, let's see, what kind of guitars do you have? What's my main axe? I have a bunch of guitars. So, um, my main electric guitars, I have, um, everything from, I have a Gibson Les Paul. Um, I have, um, what year is it? 20, it's the new reissue, the 60s the 60s series the one that was released in 2019 i have a 2014 gibson 335 which i really like i have a bunch of um well not a bunch oh yeah i got a bunch of uh eddie van halen guitars i have um a couple of the fender evhs and i have four pv wolfgangs um from back in the day which are now collector's items so i'm so glad i have that um i have a paul reed smith um, 594, and I also probably one of my favorite guitars that I have is the Paul Reed Smith DGT, the Dave Grissom model. Love that guitar a lot. And then for an acoustic, I have a Taylor um, six string, and I have a Taylor nine string. So I do have a lot of guitars. I play them as much as possible. I love having them. I don't play them all. I'm just I like to have them and look at them, and you know it's it's fun. Um, so I have quite a few, and I enjoy playing them. Thanks for asking. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, great content. Cheers. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend. You too, Robbie. Jimmy, take care. Oh, Jimmy's saying take care to Robbie. Have a good weekend. Okay, cool. James Saint. Hey, hey, James. What's up, brother? Uh, continue to stay safe, everyone. Donnie, yes, that goes without saying. Hope you guys are all safe. Hope everybody's still healthy going through our crazy pandemic. Hopefully we'll all get shot with a vaccine soon and everybody will be able to go back to normal. We'll have to see. Tim says he has to run. Great night. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you watching, Tim. It really does mean a lot. Okay, man. If that's it for tonight, thank you so much once again for joining us for another live stream. This was a lot of fun. Next week, maybe we'll do something different. Make sure, you, again, you stay close to all the websites. Make sure you're at Home Recording Made Easy. Dave's got all the links in the chat. Make sure you check all that stuff out. Um, and until next time.
Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.